A lot of you guys think that I'm crazy for wanting to get rid of my 24 inch subwoofers, but I do have my reasons. So we're gonna talk about them in this video. So stick around and hear me out. I've actually been getting a lot of questions from you guys on Facebook and Instagram asking why I'm getting rid of my 24 inch Funk Audio and Harbottle Audio subwoofers. Some people are wondering what I could possibly be upgrading to at this point. Some of you are even wondering if I've just completely lost my mind and I'm just crazy. I can assure you, I lost my mind a long time ago, so it had nothing to do with this decision. All of those questions will be answered in today's video video. I'm Barrett, this is Spec of Tech. Welcome to the channel. For those of you that follow the channel, you know that I've been rocking 24 inch subwoofers for just over a year, the last of which I just purchased in May of 2021, and that's the Funk Audio 24E. But before we can get into why I'm getting rid of the 24 inch subwoofers, we need to talk about goals. So my goal for my system started off as something pretty simple, but it got a little bit complicated over the years, simply because I am curious and I do like to try things in my own space. But my goal was to have three or four identical looking and equally performing high performance subwoofers that would give me an extreme bass experience that I was craving for. So before I could officially decide on which subwoofers that would be, because I do like to try things in my own space, I wanted to try a lot of different subwoofers to see what would suit my needs and what would get me to my goal. And a lot of you guys have joined me on that journey of upgrade after upgrade to try and find the perfect subwoofer for me in my space, so thanks for tagging along. It all started with the monstrously huge Funk Audio LFE 24 Ultra, then to the affiliated Harbottle Audio C24 L2, which is all carbon fiber, and lastly, the Funk Audio 24E. I've linked videos in the top right hand corner if you guys are interested in seeing some more videos on those subwoofers. But to break it down simply, the LFE24 was a huge uh, ported subwoofer and the other two, the Harbottle C24 and the Funk Audio 24E are both sealed subwoofers that are very similar in size. And as you may know, I did sell the LFE24 Ultra recently because along with the monstrous performance came monstrous dimensions and a monstrous price tag of 9,000 US dollars at the time of this recording. Yes, I did want to experience this subwoofer in my own space because it is one of the highest performing subwoofers on the market. but there's just no way that I could fit three or four of them in my space. So I did end up selling it because of that size and also the price. And I just decided that large ported subwoofers just aren't for me. But if audio and home theater is for you, that's what this channel is all about. So please consider subscribing, tick the bell icon if you do, and please take just one second out of your day to hit that like button. I truly do appreciate it. So after experiencing the large ported LFE 24 Ultra, I had come to the conclusion that I wanted high performance sealed subwoofers. Yes, you do sacrifice a little bit of performance, especially in in the low end with a sealed subwoofer versus its ported counterpart, but I was willing to make that sacrifice simply because a sealed subwoofer is a lot smaller and easier to deal with. Because I have this YouTube channel and because I do change out gear quite a bit, I found myself moving the subwoofers a around a lot more than I would have wanted to, so a sealed uh, high performance subwoofer was the way to go for me. In addition to that, because I am going with three or four of these high performance sealed subwoofers, output is not going to be any issue whatsoever. So that is actually why I decided to try out the Harbottle Audio C24 L2 subwoofer. It actually has the exact same driver and the exact same amplifier that the LFE24 Ultra had, but in a sealed enclosure. For those of you that don't know, Harbottle Audio and Funk Audio are affiliated, so they do share driver and amplifier technology. And again, I did want to try this subwoofer in my own space because it is one of the highest performing sealed subwoofers on the market. but it also does fetch a hefty price tag of 8,866 US dollars at the time of this recording per subwoofer. After trying the C24 L2, it did settle my curiosity, but at the same time, I just didn't want to spend 27,000 or almost 27,000 US dollars to accomplish my goal of getting three of them. Uh, for us Canadians, that actually works out to close to 35,000 Canadian dollars, so it's just not realistic or reasonable in my opinion. I do think that that is just for the uber rich, which I am not. I'm just a guy that spends way too much money on his hobby, which I'm I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate to. Which now brings us to the recently purchased Funk Audio 24E, uh, which is very similar in size to the C24, but with a lower performance driver and amplifier, and at the time of this recording is priced at 4825 US dollars. So again, you are looking at about 15,000 US dollars. For us Canadians, that is pushing towards the $20,000 Canadian mark, and it is a step down in performance from the previous two, and I would still be spending quite a bit of money to accomplish my goal of getting three of them. 
Don't get me wrong, all three of these subwoofers do have amazing performance down to hertz in the single digits, and all three of them are on the more premium side for the enclosures, with the C24 being the nicest of them in my opinion. It's a carbon fiber composite enclosure. So I had to ask myself the question, is the look of the enclosure worth the price tag? And if you had asked me that a while back, I probably would have said yes, but putting things into perspective and that I want three of them, the hefty price tag starts to make the finish of them far less appealing. So with that question in mind, I had to ask, is there something out there that has similar or better performance for less money? And to be completely honest with you guys, I did know the answer all along because I was well aware of a subwoofer brand that had similar performance, but in a less premium enclosure with a much smaller price tag. And I'm sure a lot of you have already figured this out or know which brand that I'm talking about, and that brand is JTR. And full disclosure, I had actually tried purchasing a JTR subwoofer before the Funk Audio LFE 24 Ultra, but due to some email technical difficulties, that just didn't end up happening. And I had actually strongly considered buying a JTR subwoofer for a second time right before purchasing the Funk Audio 24E, but ultimately decided to go with the 24E at the time. In my last video, which I'll link in the top right hand corner, at the end of the video I had mentioned that I was selling my 24 inch subwoofers to go with another brand, but I never did reveal which one. Well now you guys know, that brand is JTR. So I currently have three high performance subwoofers on order from JTR. Uh, they will be arriving later on this month and I'm super excited for these subwoofers guys because I think I will finally be at my goal of three high performance subwoofers that are identical in appearance and in performance. So just in the interest of a little game around Christmas time, I'm not going to reveal which model of JTR subwoofer I'm getting. I want you guys to drop your guesses down below in the comments section and then stay tuned on the channel because I will be doing unboxing and first impression video as well as review videos on the subwoofers. So if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do tick the bell icon if you do subscribe and please take just one second out of your day to hit that like button. I truly do appreciate it. So to sum up why I don't want my 24 inch subwoofers anymore and to sum up this video, uh, it's because they're just too expensive for me to accomplish my goal. I'm not sorry at all that I bought them or tried them. Uh, like I said earlier, I do love to experience things in my own space. So I'm definitely not sorry I tried them. The subwoofers do have fantastic performance. Uh, they have super clean, tight, hard hitting, powerful bass. But at the same time, the price tag was just getting tougher and tougher to swallow. To be fair, the Funk Audio 24E, although still more expensive than the JTRs I ordered, is in the same ballpark by a few thousand dollars. As with most things though, there is a big but here. The JTR subwoofers are close to double the wattage, are similar in cone area, and will for the most part outperform the 24E in output. And as a matter of fact, the JTR subwoofers that I ordered are very similar in performance to the Harbottle Audio C24, at least when comparing the CEA 2010 numbers, but are significantly less money. But we will cover some of these differences in the upcoming videos about the JTR subwoofers once they arrive. For those of you that have stuck around this long in the video, uh, and since we are close to the end of the year, I just wanted to personally thank each and every one of you that support my channel, that watch my videos, that hit that like button. Thank you so much, guys. I honestly and truly do appreciate each and every one of you, and I look forward to an awesome 2022. Remember to enjoy your systems. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Hey you there, thanks for staying right till the end of this video. If you haven't subscribed, this is the perfect time, especially if you like big subs and you cannot lie. So go ahead, hit that subscribe button. Thank you, my friend.